Thank you very much. Right, uh, I hate apologising before I do something, but I've only just seen the slides, so uh, there's not too much there, but hopefully I won't trip over anything. Um, just wait for my... Okay. So I'm reading them as you guys are. Uh, in fact, for maybe I'll just give you some background as to the OSC. That might be a good place to start. So Open Source Consortium have uh, been around for quite a few years, probably, uh, I guess, maybe 10 years or so now, originally set up as a, an organization to work as a consortium to, build, to, to bid for large projects. That was the original idea. So one of the challenges you, you find with uh, a, a kind of community organization which is focused around collectively selling, is that everyone's friends while they're in the hunt, but when they make the kill, then maybe they are fighting over what they've caught. So that, the original uh, concept was that, but it was, it, it was very much of a, a theoretical activity. It didn't necessarily uh, achieve some of the things that uh, w was, was hoped at the time. But uh, so the original set of people who set it up changed what they did and, and moved on. And I think there's a couple of people who are still in the organization from that time, but, uh, but mostly the, the, that had changed. Then it went into a, a second uh, era, which was very much about uh, public policy and holding the government to account, FOI requests. Um, I think it did a, a very good job with the FOI requests because I think some of the things that it asked for um, it, it, it achieved and it helped understand some of the things that were going on behind the scenes. At the time where I think even the government is probably more open than it was back then, it was a, it was a good mechanism. Um, but again, as things have moved on, uh, it's in its next phase. And uh, I've, I've been a member for quite a long time, since about 2008, I think I originally joined the Open Source Consortium. And, uh, and now being the membership secretary, I'm using the OSC to deliver my vision, which is the open source marketplace, which I, which I talked about earlier. Um, so if we talk about the uh, introduction that Irony originally put together, so uh, advocating and development of open standards, open source software and hardware in the UK, a body of expertise and experience, a voice for the industry, a point of reference, peer support and partnership opportunities for members. So these things do really happen. We do, as members, get together. We do find uh, either share problems, and these problems can be software problems. You, you sometimes have conversations on the list uh, regarding a piece of software and some help that people need or, or some support. But actually, some recent conversations we've had in the, in the open source uh, consortium community have been how open is open enough. There's, there's this debate about openness. So some people view that there's a very clear black and white open source uh, way of being, and that's the only way to be. On the other hand, there's other people who are uh, very much uh, traditional business models that, that, that they operate from, and they import open source. And there is a contention between these, these two poles, plus everything in, in the middle. So there's, there's lots of different things here, uh, lots of different perspectives, and, and actually we debate those, and we try and debate them in a, in a very informed but non-emotional way, because that, again, that's what, it's not a religion, it's not about one view is better than the other view, it's, it's actually, we need to find ways of working together. So that's what the Open Source Consortium does, and uh, again, I'm looking to, to, to get more members to the Open Source Consortium so that we can help small businesses. Uh, I've talked a little bit about my business and what I'm doing, but actually, it might sound strange, I need competitors, I need good competitors. I need to not be one company who does this thing, but I need to be in a group of 10, 20, 30 other companies. Look at the, the size of the market I mentioned earlier. There's enough room. If, if the open source marketplace took 1% of the current spend in the technology sector, all of those companies will be doing very well. So we need to build that marketplace. Um, OK, so who's it for? SMEs, small businesses. Uh, there's corporates involved, a couple of corporates in the uh, OSC, they find it useful because they can keep in touch with what's going on on the ground. Uh, that's for their, for their agility. Sometimes corporates are slow to react, so it's useful for them. Uh, individual people. There's a, there's a lot of people in the open source world, open, in the general open marketplace, who are an individual doing their thing, maybe as a consultant. Uh, and again, it can help them uh, find work sometimes. It can help them work with SMEs and corporates to deliver a particular challenge. It's very flexible. Again, it's value-driven. It's value-driven market. So anyone who can add value, uh, the better. 
policymakers. Uh, we were at the um, Policy Exchange uh, a year or two ago and uh, put on an event there to talk about some of the open standards uh, conversations and again engage some of the, the, the public sector uh, and other industry groups, BCS and, and others, there's, there's a, an overlap. There's many industry groups in the technology sector who need to know what's going on in the marketplace, who need to access resources. So it, it is a meeting of all of these different, uh, different areas. So top-down, uh, challenging barriers to adoption. That's a, that, that's, that's a great one. There's lots of artificial barriers to adoption. They're, they're not all artificial. The, again, the market needs to move on. The, with, through the Open Source Consortium, we need to become better as a, as a marketplace, become more accessible, have a place that people can go to. Uh, remove that excuse that, that people don't buy open source and people don't sell open source by, by creating that place for people to go. Um, but there are, there are artificial bar barriers uh, of, of support, quality, all these different things. And actually, they're all solvable if people come and talk to us. Uh, information, what's out there in the industry, supplies, applications, licenses, and current issues. Now, the Open Source Consortium is, it, it, it itself needs some work. It needs more people. It needs problems to solve. It needs more engagement. So it, it, I, I'm looking to, to encourage as many people to get involved as they can. Uh, even if you want to come in and ask questions, challenge the community. If, if someone is from a, a market outside the open source market and wants to come and ask some difficult questions, then please do, because the industry will only get better at answering them if people come along and ask them. So, so it would be good for, for people either in the industry or even outside it to come along and get involved. Some activities, co-clubs. So in, um, in some areas, the open source consortium is, is is used as a, as a vehicle to bring people together to help um, teach co-clubs in school. So in, in my hometown of rugby, um, it, we, there's, we've, there's a quite a high concentration, surprisingly, of open source skills for some reason. I don't w know how that happened, but it, it, it has. Um, and uh, Irene, uh, she runs a company called Creditive, one of our competitors. We're a few hundred yards away from each other, but hey, that's good. We, we can build the industry. So we use some of our staff members go and teach young children at primary schools how to, how to get involved in Raspberry Pis, how to program them, how to think about computers. Um, so that's, we kind of put that as part of the, the OSC, but uh, it's kind of a partnership between the companies and the, and the communities. Uh, Linux user groups, so again, we're all active in the Linux user groups. Open hardware, Software Freedom Day, we've, uh, we've run a couple of Software Freedom Days and uh, want to work with other people who run Software Freedom Days to see if we can pull some of the knowledge and through the Open Source Consortium create a, a pack which makes it very easy for someone to organise such an event. Um, so the more input we can get on that, the better, and, and people who can run the events as well. We've, had, uh, we've been involved in cons uh, consultations regarding policy. Uh, there was the Open Standards uh, policy consultation a couple of years ago and various members of the Open Source Consortium got together, shared some of their concerns, their views, argued the arguments on the list and then came up with the conclusions and then submitted those in our different responses to those policies. Uh, Open Document Foundation, Interpo Interoperability, Plug Fests, Open Forum Europe. So we work with other organisations as well. Uh, recently I was working, you've, if you've seen the Plug Fest document that was out in the reception that was produced uh, early this month um, related to the, uh, the, the, the open document format uh, and its adoption and the supporting of its adoption within the UK government and with the, the Dutch government. This was over in The Hague. Um, so there's various things we do. Um, raising the profile of the industry, I think, is the, is the, the key uh, points on here. We need to create that place where people go for open source. So again, remove that excuse. If we can get to the point where the Open Source Consortium is known as the, the place that you go when you want advice, you want to buy, you want to, you want to be a supplier, then, uh, then that would be very good. That's the aspiration. Becoming the go-to place for open source skills as well. We've had um, recruitment recruiters come to us as well to say, can we work with you on, uh, for, for recruitment? Well, that's, as long as it's transparent, that's not a bad thing because then if people know they want to get a, a job in the open source industry, they go to the open source consortium and we've got recruiters there. Again, it's all part of that marketplace. Over time, we're looking to formalize some of these activities, make it more structured, but actually it takes volunteer effort, as all these things do. So uh, if, we, if we all have an interest in seeing the benefits of open source, we need to put something in and, and people need to come and offer their skills, their services, their time to do these things. 
Um, and uh, a case study, someone asked earlier about case studies. It would be great if we can build that library of case studies as part of the Open Source Consortium, showcase member services. We're looking at some kind of self-certification of, of grading of how open are you. And it's not a judgment that one's good or one's bad. It's just transparency. You know, some people import it, some people export it. Let, let's not say well, one's better or worse. Let's just have that list to say this supplier operates at this level. They do give back. They do support the community. Uh, and that they do other things. Uh, membership, so there's individual um, and so we've got two areas. So we've got an associate, uh, if the open source consortium would like someone to be involved rather than them having to the pay, the BCS for instance is like a partnership, there's an associate membership or the other hand you can be uh, an ordinary member which is a voting member either a corporate or, a, or individual, very similar just different uh, uh, costs. Uh, I think currently it's £120 for a company and uh, per year and £10 for an individual. There's some of the members. We have some on the uh, Open Source Consortium banner as well. And uh, yeah, really, come and, uh, come and join us. That's it. <laughs>